of supernatural intervention without pay. Okay, watch this. Watch this. yourself what is it God is about to do for me everything that's in your spirit I came Dr. Morgan I came to release it I came to release it on anybody that wanted I'm not with you tonight I know what God watch this I stepped in that man's church and God had given me this word pastor and I got done preaching and the man said to me I got in the car and I was on my way back to the hotel and the deacon said the man that was driving me said prophet is mine he said um I see that you on TV Okay, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> in the same 30 days, in the same 30 day frame, I'm laying on the couch in the hotel room and I had been calling the Word Network for almost three years saying, can I have a spot? Can I have a spot? No, 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 no. Can I? We don't have it. We ain't there. It ain't. And pastor, I was laying on the couch in the hotel room and I went up in the spirit and I started speaking in tongues and God said, get up and call him right now. I said, what? he said, now. I picked up the phone, I called Tanya, I said, dial the word network right now. She said, well, prophets, I've been calling them for the last three or four days and they haven't returned my phone call. I said, they're getting ready to answer the phone right now. And it ain't just getting ready to be an answer, the president gonna answer the phone. See, let me tell you something. You get in the realm of God when you get in another level, honey. Listen, you speak stuff that you don't even know what you're talking about. You start talking in another realm, in another place. I said, he gonna answer the phone today. He came to the phone, he said, Prophet Biden, what can I do for you? I told you you got to be borderline crazy. I said, God said, it's time for me to be on TV now. He said, you know what? Let me get myself together. He said, because there's other people. Just this morning, a preacher called me and canceled his five-day-a-week spot. And there's other people on the waiting list, but forget it. God told me to give it to you. Watch this. Then the devil said, now how you gonna pay for it? Three days later, a man called my ministry and said, I saw you on TV this morning and God told me for the next six months to pay your TV bill. No, it didn't stop there. Then somebody else called back and said, God told me to put you on TV five days a week here. You ain't gotta pay nothing. Put you on TV five days a week here. You ain't gotta pay nothing. I'm here to tell you, he done already paid it. He's looking to fulfill his word. Okay, let me help you. Let me tell you why you paying. Cause you ain't got enough word level to get it free. Increase your word level and you cancel your debt. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I wish I had somebody to go with me on this. Increase your word level and it speeds up your deliverance. Increase your word level and it speeds up the freedom for your family, for your mind, for your spirit. How you, gonna, how you gonna get that? How you gonna do that? How you gonna walk in that? How you gonna build that business? How you gonna work it out? How you gonna move out of town? How you gonna work it out? What's in here? What's in here? What's in here? Wait, 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 wait. So, Pastor. I'm on TV. I'm on TV. Uh, 
Mm. Mm. Then God says, step out. I want you to go to the Georgia Dome. I want you to do this thing. I want you to walk in faith. Mm. I steps out and I'm starting to move. Mm. My calculation say, he go, he, he go intellect. If you get these amount of people by these amount of times, then you can pay the bill. But then the Lord sent me down on the Indian reservation and told me to go down there and preach to a bunch of Indians. And I get down there and just so happened one of the Indians was a multi-millionaire. You don't hear me. And she called my ministry and said, God told me that you're to walk into the Georgia Dome with all the debt paid before you even get there. Okay, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. No, y'all play too much. No, no, no. See, y'all trying to play church. Help! You trying to play church. But God is about to do something. He's about to use the foolish thing to confound the wise. You thought the word was just the Bible. But you better get it off of your coffee table. Get it off of the back seat of your car. And get it in your spirit. Get the word. You get the word. And the word will go get your stuff. The word will go get your healing. You trying too hard. You working too hard. You get the word. And the word will pay your bills. You get the word. The word will give you a place to live. You get the word. The word will give you a car to drive. I walk in there, I walk in the man's church, the deacon said, I see you on TV, do you think you ever want to just shoot television, like in a studio? I said, yes, I would, but um, I've been looking, can't find no place. He spins the car around, said, forgive me, prophets, but I got to take you back to the church. He take me back to the church, he called the pastor. He said, Pastor Prophet, Bynum is coming back to the church. He said, because something dropped in my spirit. So he talked a little bit real quiet. When I got back to the church, he said, Pastor told me to take you up north. So I get up north, Pastor, and John Maxwell's old building, he just moved out. The pastor walked me in the building and said, there's $1.2 million worth of studio equipment, five cameras, room already soundproof. God told us to build your set right here and give it to you. No, you don't. As a matter of fact, he walked me a few feet further and said, God said that this right here was supposed to be John. This used to be John Maxwell's office. But God told me to make this your office. He told me don't even take it. And when I went in that office, I heard the Holy Ghost say, it's transfer time. You don't hear what I'm saying. God is in the process right now of shifting things around in the kingdom because it's your turn. It's your season. It's your, who am I preaching to? I wish somebody would. My office is in John Maxwell's old building. Pastor, in my office in Waycross, we got staples tables and yellow pads and phones sitting on top of staples tables. He turned the corner and walked me to another section. Whole call center, cubicles and everything. Top of the line telephones with automation lines. God told me to give this to you too. Move your car. Y'all, y'all, come on. Y'all, y'all see. You're not hearing me. No, I wish somebody would just hear what I'm trying to tell you right here. I wish somebody would hear what I'm trying to tell you. And so what he said to me in Tuesday morning prayer last week, he said, when you get to Bethel, tell the people, 
that tonight we enter in to the anointing of suddenly oh you didn't hear me we enter into the anointing of suddenly that means suddenly it shall come upon you suddenly the devil shall turn it loose suddenly you shall possess it suddenly you shall walk in it suddenly the devil will move out of your way suddenly everything you've been believing for it's coming to pass tonight somebody begin to shout you're under a new anointing for suddenly The wait is over. The wait is over. See, let me tell you. Let me help y'all with something. Ever since, ever since, God has released that word to me. since the Lord released that word to me. Dr. Johnson, when that lady ran up here, that happens every time. Because ever since I've been walking in this realm of suddenly, people have been trying to hit my car. All kinds of stuff. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear what I'm saying. Because the devil knows that I'm in a suddenly whirlwind. See, let me help you with something. If you're in this building tonight and the enemy has speeded up his activity on your life before you came in this building, it's because he knew you were headed for 219-09. Oh, you don't hear me. He knew, he knew you was headed for Jamaica Avenue. And when you walked in the building, you thought you was coming to church, but you didn't come to church tonight. You came into a realm of suddenly... You went around my suddenly. If you praise and for it, y'all don't hear me. I know what I'm talking about. In a matter of an hour, in one hour, you'll see some stuff breaking. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about suddenly. Praise him. I came sick, but suddenly my body is healed. I came depressed, but suddenly I feel joy. I came with no money, but suddenly I got wealth. You better give God a shout in here.
me help you with something wherever you are. In the overflow room, I don't care where you're at. Can I tell you a secret? He ain't getting ready to wait until your now circumstance change. I, I, I don't think you heard what I said. This kind of faith movement and breakthrough is the one that's got the title on it. He prepareth the table before me in the presence of my enemies. That means in the midst of everything the devil has done to attack me. God gonna bless me right in the midst of my warfare. Let me help you with something. You waiting on God to fix it to praise him. And God waiting on you to praise him because he's already fixed it. I'm going to prove it right now. Go to Lucas, Luke 6. Somebody got it. Somebody got that thing. I can hear it. He reversing it. I said every time you holler, he reversing something in the spirit. Every time you give him a shout, he's taking back what the devil has stolen from you. He 
let me show you something. Let me show you something. Pastor Jones. Dr. Boyd, let me show you something. Let me mm. show you something I never saw. Mm. I never saw this mm. in the word until this season. Mm. Until this season in Luke, mm. Luke the sixth chapter. Luke the sixth chapter, I've never saw this. Now, now this one here gonna confirm what I'm telling you. God's trying tonight Hallelujah. to get people to move in the now of what he said. Yes. I'm going to show you something that's going to change your life because it changed my life. Captain, what he said in 6 and 17. And Jesus came down with them uh -huh. and took his stand on a level spot with a great crowd of his disciples and a vast throng of people from all over Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to listen to him and to be cured of their diseases. Did you hear that? Now, you may be sitting next to somebody that just came to church tonight. But if, but if, but if this scripture is bearing, would tell them, I didn't come to church, I came to be healed. See, I came with something on my mind. I didn't come to church, I came. See, that's the difference between you and your neighbor because they came for church. You walked in the door and you came for something. Read what he said. Read what he said. Even those who were disturbed and troubled with unclean spirits and they were being healed also. Did y'all hear that? Did you hear what the Bible just said? Which means 35 minutes ago while I was preaching God already Delivered you. It didn't happen when I finished. It happened while the word of God was going forth. You were being healed, set free, and delivered. Watch this. Read what it said. And all the multitude were seeking to touch him. Uh -huh. For healing power was all while going forth from him and curing them all, saving them from severe illnesses or calamities. Watch this. It says, Pastor says, and while the whole multitude was seeking to touch him, while he was preaching, it wasn't me preaching tonight. While he was preaching, God was delivering you. While he was preaching, he was setting your family free. While he was preaching, your body was being healed. Dr. Johnson, I got to come over here and lay my hands on you. I got to lay my hands on your head while she read this next part what he say and solemnly lifting up his eyes on his disciples uh -huh. he said uh -huh. blessed happy with life joy and satisfaction in god's favor uh -huh. and salvation apart from your outward condition hey watch this did you hear that did you hear that did you hear that did you hear that okay let me help you 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 saying god i want to see you fix it and he just said I'm giving you favor and blessings and deliverance apart from your outside condition. Which means I see your condition. But what I'm doing right now, it's apart from your outside condition. Which means it ain't got to change right now on the outside. Because I'm doing it anyhow apart from your outside condition. Now, this is where the real praise is, Dr. Hubbard. This is where you separate the church people from the people of God. Because the church people got to wait till they see God do it. Spiritual people, all 
only got to hear is God say it. Watch this. Read it. And to be envied, are you poor and lowly and afflicted, destitute of wealth, influence, position, and honor? For the kingdom of God is yours. Can I help you with that right there? Everybody in here that's been struggling in your finance, let me help you. God has allowed you to be in the position that you're in right now because, oh God, oh God, because he was trying to give you the kingdom. Oh my God, somebody better go to praise it right there because. I'm trying to give you something money came by. I'm trying to teach you how to operate and something money came by. I'm trying to show you that the worse it gets, the kingdom, the kingdom is yours. What is that? What is that? What is that? Blessed, happy with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, apart from your outward condition. Uh-uh. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. Apart from, he said that, he said again. He said again, I'm giving you favor. I'm giving you blessings. I'm giving you a breakthrough. Apart from your outside condition. That means I'm going to take the condition that you're in right now. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. And I'm going to give you favor apart from your outside condition. Which means everything you're going through on the outside doesn't determine what I'm doing. As a matter of fact, whatever you see going on on the outside, I'm doing the opposite. Can I help you right now? I'm going to stop right there. Can I help you right quick? Can I help you right quick? This is how you break. I promise you I'm telling you the truth. This is how you break on through. This is how you break through the night. This is how you walk out that door and you done broke through. Wherever your greatest attack is right now, I want you to get it in your mind. I want you to let it come up in your spirit. And I want you to start praising God because that's the area that God is giving you the victory in. Greater, greater 
is getting it done who am I talking about right now my word level is getting it done turn about and touch me people said my word level is getting it done I don't know what I ought to ask for I don't know what I like to ask for but the spirit is making intercession for me because the spirit is coming to find his word and the word and the spirit is getting it done for me My belly is getting it done for me. My belly is getting it done for me. Somebody just reach up and go to thanking God and say, my belly is getting it done for me. Sister Tanya, my belly is getting it done for me. I don't know how God needs to fix it. There's some stuff I don't know how God gonna work it out. But when I can't trust my emotions, I can trust my belly. When I can't trust my emotions, I can trust my belly. When I can't trust my head, I can trust my spirit. When I need God to do it, all I gotta do is go find it. When I need him to do something, all I need to do is go find it in the word. And if I ever put it in my spirit, then it obligates the spirit of the Lord to make intercession for me. I don't have to figure it out. The word has a plan. The word has a route. The word is what conquers the keys to death, hell, and the grave. That was just a power sentence right there. You need to praise him right there. I said, the word that holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. It's the word that makes the devil takes his hand off. It's the word 
that causes me to walk in victory when failure is all around me. It's the word that is the lifter of my head. It is the word that is my heart fixer and my mind regulator. It's the word that brings me peace in the midst of a shaken situation. It's the word that works it out, Sister Jones, when I done gave it up. It's the word that says, hold on, when I'm trying to let go. It's the word that says, be strong, when I'm feeling weak. That's why the devil don't want us to read it. That's why he rock you to sleep at night. That's why he makes your day so busy that you never get a chance to pick it up. That's it, Sister Jerry. That's why he keep you running all the time. That's why he don't never give you a chance to just go somewhere and sit down for a half an hour and just read it. Because he knows it's the only thing that can keep you. It's the only thing that can heal you. It's the only thing that can make a way out of nowhere. It answers all of my problems. It resolves my fear. That's why he wants you to keep it riding on the back seat of your car. And that's why he only wants you to pick it up when you're on your way to church on Sundays. That's why he don't want you to sacrifice and read it on your lunch hour. Because he knows the more I get it in my spirit, the more valuable I become. That's why no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. Not because God likes me. That's what he means that when the enemy comes in like a flood. This is why the spirit of the Lord can lift up a standard against him. Not because he likes you. But because when he sees his word. He must make manifest his standard. No word. No power. Little word. Little power. Much word. Much power. The anointing is not because we can preach, pray, prophesy, and sing. What sets some apart from others is the word level. It's not the word that gets in your head. It's the word that penetrates your heart. Because the word that penetrates your head can cause your mind to change, but as soon as something comes along, your mind will change back. But the word that penetrates your heart, it does battle for anything that's foreign that tries to enter into your spirit. It stands at the gate of your heart and it guards and it protects. That's why it is the word that wages a warfare. When I say Satan, the Lord rebuke you. He's not hearing me. Because the Bible says, Dr. Morgan, that when the sons of Sceva went out and tried to cast out devils like the rest of the disciples, the demon spoke out and said, Jesus, the word we know. Yes. Has you ever looked at it like that? Yes. Not just the Jesus that was walking the streets of Galilee, but he was the word made flesh. So what the enemy was saying to them is, the word we know. Yes. Yes. And thou people that that have walked with the word we know. But we don't know you. And they were stripped of their clothing because they tried to confront and come back the enemy with no word level. The kind of demonic forces 
that is attacking us in this hour will only respond to Jesus we know. Jesus we know. And the people that walk in the word we know. Who are you? Some things you don't even have to rebuke. You can be minding your own business. And the man came running to Jesus and said, why are you tormenting me? He ain't opened up his mouth. But when you fill yourself with the word, when demons see you coming, so that's why sometimes you think, you think attacks on your job and all of that is the devil attacking you. No, it is the word in you that's making manifest every demonic hidden spirit. All of a sudden demons just start manifesting. Manifesting all around you. People showing out on you you never even thought would show out on you. And you know what the Lord is doing? He's revealing to you that they was always demon possessed. You just didn't know it. But when you got full of the word, the word confronts and it begins to cry out. Calling every spirit to surface. When you have the word, the light is turned on. When you have the word, he won't let stuff blindside you. When you get in the word, he'll show you. Before it even happens, he'll speak it to you. And your spirit will be braced for it. And when it comes, you said, devil, I knew you was coming. But I'm ready. Oh, my God. All over this building, I got to go. I got to go. But it is the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Because my faith in God is my posture in the world. It is not my feelings. Whew. He spoke it in an hour. In an hour, I'm going to begin to make manifest. In an hour. He spoke that about 15 minutes ago. I'm going to begin to show you. That a change has taken place. That the yoke has been destroyed. And he has speeded up. He has hastened to perform his word. And you've been wondering all this time. Why it hasn't come to pass. Because I've been asking God. Jeremiah 1 and 12 says. Well I watch over my word. My word not you. I watch over my word. To perform it when I see it I'll babysit it until I bring it to pass when I see it I'll get in a hurry the book of Psalms says he quickeneth his word the book of Psalms says his word runs swiftly so I'm waiting on God to do it in my emotions and the word it already ran off it's already doing it When we move, and I'm going to help you with something this year that's going to change your life. It has changed my life. Mm. My word level keeps me authentic in the realm of the spirit. I cannot move in a realm that I have no level of the word for, or else I move in witchcraft. If I move in anything in the kingdom and I have no word level for it, I am moving in witchcraft. Some of y'all don't understand that. I wish I had somebody to help me right there. And so, Prophet Jones, whatever it is, I need God. To do on my behalf I must begin to fast in that realm if I need God to give me oranges I don't study about apples
when I need oranges, I plow through the word and I dig everything out about oranges. I read about everybody who operated in oranges. I meditate on the people that had oranges and lost the oranges and why they lost the oranges. I read about the people who it took them a long time to get the oranges and why they... Because when I need oranges, I need to read about what the spirit of what I'm expecting the spirit of the Lord to move about. Because if I don't have a word level on that, God is doing something for me. But he's not doing what I need him to do. If you're hungry and you you hungry and you ain't ate in months and you're starving. And he wakes you up this morning, Rabina, and you still got saliva in your mouth. What difference does that make, Mother Board, if you keep waking me up for, for three months and my need is hunger? So why do I keep laying down and going to sleep and reading about you waking me up when my need is hunger? So since there's some things that you're doing for me anyway because you're sovereign, let me get over here and read about hunger. Because he that hunger and thirst after righteousness, he shall be filled. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. Blessed are the pure in heart. So a lot of y'all think that means heaven. He revealed to me that that doesn't just mean heaven. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Which means I don't need you to come and prophesy to me. I need to keep my heart pure, because when I keep my heart pure, I see God moving. I see him working in my head. I can see him. Thank you very much. Call her out. I don't need you to call me out. Because when I walk in purification, I see him. I may not understand what he's doing, but I know he's working it out for my good. Every person in this building, that's what I'm talking about. I'm learning that in every area of my life, Sister Kim. That when God speaks to me, my level of moving in him is my level of the word. And how is it, Pastor, that people end up in witchcraft when they walk in, when they operate in the kingdom? Because witchcraft is rebelling against the word. Yeah. Let me tell you what witchcraft is. Witchcraft is rebelling against the word. And witchcraft is when you have a level of the word in your spirit and you operate in a realm that is less than the level of the word that you house. I didn't hear nobody say amen right there. Witchcraft is when you are a person that walks in the level of the word and you house a certain realm and then God begin to require you to move listen he will only require you to move in the realm that your word level has taken you to and when he puts you in a realm of the word and you move less than that realm you are now in witchcraft because the Bible said he doesn't call us evangelist Hubbard to be just hearers of the word but doers of the word once you've heard it, you do it. If you plan it, you got to walk in it. If you read it, he's going to require that you move in what you have read. So when God said move out in ministry, 